child fell between a train and a station platform. Now, this happened when the train was stopped in Sydney, Australia. See the little guy right there as he's clapping his hands, excited to get on the train. And then he was with his mom, and he fell right between the train and the loading area. People hurried to help to try to get him out of that gap. Thankfully, people were able to pull him to safety, and he was not hurt. Some scary moments at Daytona Beach, Florida, when a shark swam within feet of people swimming in the water, as you see right there from a news chopper. Now, people spotted a number of sharks in the area. Sunday, a shark bit a teen surfer's foot just a few miles down the coast. Two North Carolina parents are demanding change after their son ended up on the wrong international flight. The parents said United Airlines required their 14-year-old son to fly in an unaccompanied minor program because of his age. He was heading to Sweden alone to visit his grandparents. After the boy flew from Raleigh to Newark, the family said the United agent put him on the wrong flight, heading to Germany. The family said his plane was on the runway, taxiing when the boy got the flight attendant's attention. They track bags, and, but they should also, of course, track the, the kids and have safe and sound uh, handover procedures when they go from one fly to the other. We want these processes to be tightened up for the benefit of all kids and all families. The family hopes their story forces airlines to improve their unaccompanied minor programs. CBS said United apologized to the family. Paul, back with us this evening. Uh, very busy this afternoon mm -hmm. with uh, some severe weather. Now we're looking at what's coming in from northern Indiana. Yeah, and we'll have some thunderstorms that come into parts of the northern part of our viewing area, perhaps late tonight towards early tomorrow morning. I don't suspect that we're going to see widespread coverage in these thunderstorms, but of course, meteorologist Dante Jones will be with you if any of these storms drift southward and if they are on the stronger side, perhaps severe as well. Live Doppler 7 radar scanning the skies for you. You can see we are quiet throughout the Miami Valley. We do have one little cell that has been dying out moving to the east southeast now entering southwestern Auglaize County and northwestern uh, Shelby County up towards Fort Loramie. That's going to be about it for most of the area with the exception of this new cell that is formed to the east of Bell Fountain and just north of that a flood advisory remains in effect until 1:30 in the morning for that very small sliver of Logan County and the rest of it is in Hardin and Union counties off to the northeast. Now those storms that came through earlier on this evening most of that activity is now in central and eastern parts of the Buckeye State. I'm monitoring a cluster of storms that is to the north and west and in fact a few moments ago there was a severe thunderstorm warning with this storm that's moving into Fort Wayne. This line of storms is slowly moving southward. Notice the amount of lightning associated with it so it will be a very noisy storm if it does make the trip into our area late tonight. As we look on future casts it appears that those chances for storms will make their way on in as we head closer to 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, and they'll be far north. There's 2 a.m. right under the banner is where that line of storms is developing. It will swing through in our far northern cities and towns through about 4.30 in the morning. So that includes Salina, Wapakoneta, Sydney, and Bell Fountain. You may hear the rumble of those uh, thunderstorms off in the distance, and then they'll move on through as we get close to that 3, 4 o'clock time frame. It does appear that those storms will exit the area, and by around 8.30 in the morning, all is quiet. And in fact, we may have an abundance of sun shine south of I-70. Temperatures right now are still rather warm and muggy. We're at 77 in Dayton. We're at 75 in Greenville and 79 degrees down in Springboro. Late tonight, your temperatures will fall to 72 for an overnight low, so we keep it mild and muggy through the night with the chances for those showers and thunderstorms across the far north. Futurecast shows we're quiet early tomorrow. Then the clouds will build back as we head towards midday and early afternoon. At lunchtime, a partly sunny to mostly cloudy sky will prevail throughout our area. Then showers and storms begin to fire off as early as 2 p.m. Future cast will show after 2 p.m. Thunderstorms become a bit more numerous and more widespread across the area. Once again, our main concerns tomorrow are going to be isolated damaging wind gusts, very heavy rain, and perhaps some hail. Tomorrow's high gets to 88 degrees with those scattered showers and storms. If you're headed to Dayton Lights and Flight tomorrow, we will be dealing with the chances for storms. The fireworks are set to go off at 10 p.m. We'll be in the upper 70s. There may be a couple of storms left over. Just make sure you check that WHIO weather app. Track that radar for those storms in and around the area. On Thursday, Englewood will have their fireworks at 10 p.m., 79 degrees. Again, a chance for a few thunderstorms there. And then Austin Landing sets their fireworks off on Friday at 10 p.m. will be around 80 
with once again a chance for a few storms. That trend will continue through the upcoming weekend. We'll be in the upper 80s with thunderstorms each and every afternoon. We'll finally get a break in the heat and humidity for Sunday and Monday with highs in the low to mid 80s. Tomorrow morning, meteorologist Dante Jones will be up with you at 425. If there are any storms out there, he'll let you know. Scientists and stargazers got quite a show today with a solar eclipse in South America. The 70-mile-wide path of totality passed over parts of Chile and Argentina. Some areas experienced near darkness for more than four minutes. The next time a solar eclipse passes over the U.S. is going to be in early 2024. The eclipse will stretch Texas to Maine. The Miami Valley will be in the path of totality. So there you go. A warning tonight about a parasite that can live in swimming pools, how long it can survive in chlorine, and how to make sure you do not get it. Storm Center 7, always tracking, alerting you to severe weather.